Well, hello. I was hoping for just a small bit of help from the community here, the vintage computing uh, community that understands this kind of stuff. I'm actually working for the first time uh, with some with an EEPROM burner, uh, actually burning something, right? Actually programming something, and I'm working with the Micro Pro, excuse me, the Mini Pro TL866. Now, this here by the, the this fantastic review by uh, EEV Blog, which I appreciate very very much and helped me greatly choose this item. Uh, this is a review of a very similar model to what I have. Uh, this is a this, uh, that's a review of the model um, CS, uh, TL866CS. I have the model TL866A, and it seems like the only difference is an extra port on the A that we're not using on the side. So I don't think this is necessarily about that, but for all intents and purposes, I'm actually working with this exact uh, EEPROM burner right here. And so the uh, software version that I have that uh, the website for this says is most current would be Mini Pro V6.85. Um, it has a higher version for the Mini Pro uh, TL8662, but uh, for the A and the CS, its highest version recommended was the Mini Pro version 6.85. And so there we are using that right here. So I have this connected. Uh, right now to this particular device. Um, just wanted to do a little bit of testing. Actually, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to disconnect it. Yes, see this? Hardware interface version no device. So we plug that back in here to the USB and there it is. It finds the TL866A uh, version 3.2.86. So I get no, no errors to upgrade or messages like that or anything. Now, I'm working with um, I'm working with the, uh, the chip right here, this particular EEPROM specifically, the Fujitsu uh, MBM2716. I'm working with uh, a vintage one, or I should say five vintage ones. I have a number of one to test with just in case one goes bad or I do something stupid. So this is the data sheet for this particular for this particular EEPROM, and I thought this was helpful. I'm not an expert at data sheets, but um, I thought maybe, I thought maybe uh, we could use this to reference some things. So I have this handy just in case we need it. Now, one of the things I wanted to do before, ahead of time was just to make sure that, you know, this thing is selected correctly. This this um, Mini Pro here is selected correct, correctly. Now, it, it has a support for a great deal of, um, it has a support for a great deal of chips. The chip that I'm working with, of course, is a Fujitsu. That's the MBM, I think. And so here's all the Fujitsu supported chips, and there are a lot of them. But uh, I am working with the 2716, and it seems pretty unambiguous here that this is the one that I want to be using here, the MBM 2716, which is a DIP24 socket, and that's exactly what I'm using. So I select that, and it seems like, you know, it makes sense. It sets these settings right here, which I assume are correct, but I thought, you know, I'd check them anyway. Now, this is a weak area of mine for understanding, so this could be an education training thing. I've done a little bit of you know Google check on this stuff, but um, you know if somebody just knows this stuff instinctively and I say something wrong, please tell me. That would be extremely helpful. So VPP voltage. I went down here to the recommended operating conditions for this chip, and so the VPP power supply recommended uh, is typical five, right? Maximum is VCC plus uh, 0.6. Well, guess what? They have it right there at five. Uh, well, now wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Actually, that might be the one I first questions because the VPP power supply, they have it at 12. VPP voltage at 12. Here, it's recommending the typical is 5. Minimum 0, maximum VCC plus 6, right? So if the VCC is 5, <laughs> uh, plus, and it's not plus 6, I don't think. Is that a period there? That's a good question. 0 0.6, well, it would make more sense... Uh, you know, this nomenclature here would make more sense if it just said plus 6 instead of instead of zero six. That looks like a decimal to me right there in that particular area. So I'm thinking I'm thinking that that's that's exactly what this is. It's VCC plus 0.6. So I'm wondering if, you know, the default on this VPP voltage is a little bit high. But then it doesn't seem like it would be detrimental because, um, you know, in, this is the absolute maximum ratings for this thing. Uh, program input with respect to VSS. Well, the the V the VPP is rated from negative three, negative point three to plus twenty six volts, right? And that's an absolute maximum. So of course we don't want to approach that. I would imagine. 
But it's, uh, I thought like, well, 12 is half that, so it seems like we're within that, that range. But then it doesn't seem to be optimum here, so I don't know if I'm overdosing, so to speak, the chip by doing this or not. But we'll get there. I just wanted to do some analysis to say I paid attention to this, and, and there we have it. So um, I thought I would start by reading a blank chip. So I have a blank chip in here, and uh, we'll just hit the read button and see how this works. Um, just like uh, just like is done in the overview here with, from the EEV blog. Thank you very much. Very, very helpful. And uh, 94 milliseconds, it's finished. Now you notice there's no X here to X out this window, so I just hit cancel, I guess. But here we have the file, and it's all what appears to be null. I believe this is a very standard EEPROM null value, meaning it's completely erased. Now, this I found quite interesting, and I don't know what to make about this. You know, the chip is in there right now. You can't see that the chip, you know, I don't have another camera on the chip. I'm sorry about that. But if I lift up the lever and I take the chip completely out, so now there's no chip in the device whatsoever. Let's read again and see if we get an error. And we click read, and we don't get an error. It takes a little longer, but barely. And look what we have, the exact same value. So it seems that it doesn't know that a chip is in there or not. If it, there is none in there, it just thinks it's blank. Isn't that interesting? And I wonder if there's another setting that I could have on this thing that, that you know might be a little bit better of a check. So that. That does not give me all the warm and fuzzies to say this thing is, you know, doing everything that it, it, it can. But, you know, let's, let's just look at some other things. Now, I don't actually have an EEPROM that has anything on it. I did have one where I tried to, I, I did an experiment with burning something, and I got an error, but I think the first, the first byte ended up being a double zero um, instead of a double F there. And uh, it, it kept coming back at that. I'm actually erasing it now because I know that shouldn't be the case when I try to burn it. When I try to burn it or program it, it should have all of this. So, you know, I was re getting repeated reads on that one. So it must be reading at least something. I don't know. But anyway, we're going to have a look at uh, we're, we're going to have a look at trying to burn a file that um, a uh, a very experienced person created for me that's supposed to fit on this chip. So let me open that file right now. Let's try to burn it. And let's see what happens. All right, so I have my files up and ready to go here. Um, okay, so here's some notes from um, from the person that assembled this for me, ready to burn. And uh, this is just what they used. Just this thing right here, uh, LWASM, um, so on and so forth. And so in the programmer, select the specific 2716 chip, which I've done, and open light.bin. And so that is exactly what I'll be doing right here. We're just going to do a file. We're going to do an open, and we are going to find the we're going to find the correct file which we have open right here. So let me just do that momentarily here. All right, we're going good here so far. So far, so light two dot bin. So we're going to open that, and uh, it's asking for binary and int or Intel hex. So I'm just going to assume binary. Um, and just leave all these things as defaults. And so there we go, look at this. We have a file, definitely has some, some bytes in it, and then a few there towards the end. Absolutely fantastic. So, all right, so we have something to write. I think that's fantastic. So I guess all there is left now is, you know, to click, click, click the program button on the, uh, click the program button here. All right, so let's click the program button and see what happens. All right, so it says plug it in. Well, it's definitely plugged in, I assure you of that. Click program, and instant error. Now, it seems that every single thing I've ever tried to write to any of these chips gets this error. And I thought, well, maybe the chip's bad. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to take this chip out, and we're gonna put in a third chip. So I've gotten that error now on the second chip successfully. In, in succession, I should say. Not successfully, because they're both failures. Let's put in a third chip. Let's do a quick read. Make sure it's all blank. Okay, cancel, because there's no... There we go. That looks good to me. I don't see anything there. Now, there's this blank check, but what is it doing? It's not giving me a result, is it? <laughs> so I don't quite know what that does just yet, but it would be nice to know. And so, all right, that looks blank. So now... Let's open that file again, light2.bin, put that back in here. Yes, open it in binary, and click program, 
and program, same exact error. So this is now the third of five I've gotten this on, and so I, I think that something else is wrong, and I don't know what that is. It's, so uh, any ideas would be greatly helpful, because I think I've pretty much ruled out at least the, um, the, the hardware of the chip itself. Um, you know, maybe there's a problem with the programmer itself, the device, I don't really know. Uh, but I wonder if this is just something I just don't understand. Uh, buffer data 0.x verify, you know, could one of these settings be wrong for this chip? Well, you know, as I said earlier, I was wondering about the uh, the VPP being too high, right? So maybe, although it seems it seems with intolerances, but it could be too high. So let's let's have a check here. Let's change the VPP uh, down to five. Okay, let's change that. We can't. It's not even an option, right? 12.5 is as low as it goes. So. That's interesting. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so, uh, what other diagnostics can I do on this? If anyone has any idea, I would greatly appreciate knowing. Definitely greatly appreciate knowing. So, this is this, these are the errors that I'm getting here. And you know, I've I, no matter what I put in this file, you know, is it is it telling us it doesn't like this file? This file is not compiling, or is it telling us that it doesn't like the write process? Um, or something. Um, anything would be great, and I appreciate any, anyone's help here. Thank you very much.